Okay, thanks Betty and uh, thanks for the invitation to speak here today and to talk about this project. Uh, and I'm just going to say a few words to set the context and then introduce uh, Sinead to, to give the main presentation. Uh, I remember I became Dean of Graduate Studies at UCC five years ago and I remember on the first day I was in post having a chat. I was in Dublin at a meeting with a, uh, um, a senior member of the university and they said, well, what are you going to do? And I, I was brainstorming ideas and I said, one of the things that I thought was in my head was the idea that every PhD student would have their own dedicated website to talk about their project, their experiences and their activities. And this was just something that was lodged in my head. And over the intervening years, a lot of people are probably aware has changed in graduate education. There's been more and more focus on things beyond the thesis, beyond the project. Uh, more focus on the development of skills. More focus on students becoming involved in all kinds of activities, outreach activities, communication activities, courses, training, all kinds of things. Um, more emphasis on building networks of students, of building communities of students, of trying to overcome traditional issues of isolation and loneliness as a research student, and a whole new focus on careers and presenting yourself to non-academic employers in the most professional way. So there were all of these things that have been bubbling around for years, and I guess a couple of years ago it became apparent that one of the ways that when I sought advice and talked to people with expertise, was to look at this area of e-portfolios. And we had a lot of discussions, in particular with, uh, with uh, Grace in the learning technologies in the early days and, and, and with Tim and, and the others subsequently who provided us with a lot of advice and input and directed us to this particular add-on package to Blackboard as seeming to offer a solution to what we were trying to do. And it was called Expo, it's now called, I'm not sure it's e-portfolios, but then Blackboard, Sinead will tell you the technical part. But we were recommended, we did quite a bit of work in terms of uh, trying to, to build uh, a kind of a, a concept of the platform. And then this year, I guess, we thought, well, the only way we can really move this forward is now to release it into the wild. So we first um, signed up a number of students, uh, PhD students who've been involved in other things like the Boolean and other initiatives, and had an interest in this type of activity as a pilot group to try and set up their own portfolios. And Sinead was one of that original pioneering group, and she's going to share her experiences and some of the other students in that group's experiences. We then, uh, based on the positive feedback about ease of use and usefulness, that, that, that we liked what came out so much, we then rolled it out kind of to, to existing students. We had launched in September. We were, uh, introduced Sinead kind of gave a talk on it at induction for all the incoming research students, and we have sent lots of emails. So it's not something which is compulsory for, for PhD students to participate in or anything, but we're trying to promote and encourage its use as widely as possible. We don't have an idea yet of what the outcome and the uptake has been, but we will continue to work on that. So I guess it's something which I certainly believe that offers a very unique and a huge uh, uh, opportunity for students to have a space in which they can record, reflect, collect it as many dimensions. They can communicate with supervisors, do all kinds of things through it. I guess thinking about the symposium, I'm not quite sure. I guess it is online learning. It's perhaps coming from a different direction because it's online reflective learning, I guess, and professional development and a, a support for that. So uh, without further ado, and uh, just a final comment is, of course, this is on Blackboard, which means that there's been lots of queries to this. This is available to every student to use. And I know there's been a lot of interest in using these tools for students at workplace and using them in different contexts. So while my focus, because of my position, my entire emphasis of this has been it's used for research students. But everything that you'll hear is equally that the technology is there, the tools are online, and it can be used for any student at the university can be encouraged to set up a portfolio. So I'll, uh, without further ado, pass over to Sinead, who was a PhD student when she began, but uh, has just completed her viva within the last couple of weeks. So uh, we congratulate her on that, and uh, thank you for sharing your experiences. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, yes, my name is Sinead Bannon, and I'm from the School of Food and Nutritional Sciences here in UCC. So I'm just going to talk to you today a little bit about this e-portfolio concept and just about my experience having been one of the students asked to pilot this project. Um, so firstly, what is an e-portfolio? Um, very simply, it's a collection of work that's stored electronically. It allows students to create a personal learning space and also share information both internally here in UCC with supervisors and peers and externally maybe with potential employers, collaborators in other institutions or anyone else in the world that they choose to share it with. So many of you here may supervise students and there's many ways that students can actually utilise this e-portfolio system for their research. Um, one thing you can do is create a research journal and you can share this with your supervisor so they can see how your work is progressing. 
Um, another thing is to develop a research plan and maybe record meetings with your supervisor, again, to see how the work is progressing. Um, now, some supervisors may be more hands-on than others, um, and for those that are more hands-on, the e-portfolio could be useful to track the meetings and see how things are going. And then those that may see their students less often, um, the research journal, I think, would be a really good idea so they can log in and monitor their students' progress. So also they can use the e-portfolio system to network with other students here in UCC and maybe find a little bit more about information um, about maybe their research projects and see what they're up to. So as I said, you can also share your information externally outside of UCC by sending a URL to maybe potential employers or collaborators in other universities. This is a really, really good opportunity to showcase yourself. Um, you can have samples of your research online. Um, you can also share a number of CVs and, as I said, samples of your research. So they can actually see more than what's on a CV. They can actually see more about your research as you're doing it. So e-portfolios, yes, they are similar to some social networking sites such as Facebook or LinkedIn, but they are different um, because they do allow you to have a lot more freedom. I'll show you in a few moments when I show you my own, just a sample of things that I've uploaded onto it. They are also purely academic, so you can include your achievements, your awards, maybe a list of publications down the road as you progress through your PhD. Um, you can also share your content more readily. So for every piece of content that you um, show on your ePortfolio page, you can choose who to share it with. So you can keep it private until you have developed it. And then when it's ready to go, you can share it with your supervisor or, as I say, other students or maybe potential employers. So just how the students can use it, as Alan just mentioned, um, the students all have a PIN and username to log on to Blackboard. So that's just how they log on to it, and the ePortfolio is located on the home page. Um, at this point, I just want to mention that the Graduate Studies website also has a really useful Get Started guide with loads of information that students can use to set up their own ePortfolio. So students can add a huge range of content types onto their ePortfolio, and I've just given a list here of just a couple of examples. So for example, blogs, they can add widgets, wiki pages, they can start discussion boards with other students and maybe staff members um, just about their research. So they can personalize it in other ways as well, such as choosing a color scheme, adding a profile picture, um, arranging their content. And as I just mentioned, this sharing content, which I think is a really useful function in the ePortfolio system. So two really important things I think to note about the ePortfolio system are that it's very user friendly and very time efficient. As Alan mentioned, I was in my final year of my PhD, so I didn't know whether I'd have enough time to throw something out. But after logging on, it was really, really easy to use. I got a lot of stuff uploaded in a relatively short space of time. And once it's set up, all you're doing is maintaining it and adding content then afterwards as you progress. So I'm just going to show you one or two examples. Um, which aren't here, sorry. Okay, so this is just a screen grab. Hopefully you can see it. So this is just my only portfolio here. You can see that I added um, a profile picture. I added a little bit of content about myself, just a little bit of background, my contact details, and I've given a piece on my research. Um, I've also included membership of various societies. You can include things on awards that you've gotten maybe throughout your time. I've also put a list of publications on it as well. So you can see that there's a huge range of content types. Now, um, you can't see it here, but you can actually upload photographs as well and links. Um, you can embed uh, media into it as well. So there's a huge range of things that students can do to it. And you don't have to be very technical at all to do it, you know, as I say, the guide is available online for any questions, but it's a matter of just clicking a button, deciding what content type you want to add and working away. So this one here is just, just, just one of the other students, his name is Brendan Cahill. He took a similar approach to myself um, and has a list of content here. Um, if the internet was working, I could show you he's uploaded some of his presentations that he's given at various conferences and a list of awards that he's gotten as well. Okay, just to sum up, um, personally I found the ePortfolio to be a really, really useful system and I think that every research student should be encouraged to use it. It's really user friendly, it's very, very simple to use. 
you get a huge amount done in a relatively short space of time. Um, as I've shown you, you do have huge freedom. You can really make it your own. I think students would enjoy setting it up. You get to showcase yourself, you know, not only to your supervisor and to other students, but down the road when you do look for employers, it gives you a little bit more than just what's on the CV. Um, I think one of the most important things is this point that it allows for extra engagement with your supervisor so they can you know, log in and connect with you and see how your research is progressing, um, especially if you don't see them that often. Um, and I just want to say that I would recommend that anyone who works with research students should recommend them to use it. Um, so that's my presentation and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. you can just send to them and within that um, you have to actually decide which pieces of content that you want to allow people to see. So when you go into your own page and you click manage content you can decide then who to share with and there is actually an option there to send it via an email to someone. Yeah, so, but it is safe then as well that no one can actually see it unless you send them the link. Yeah. It is housed, it is accessed from within Blackboard but it is actually housed outside Blackboard. So the content is housed outside, so they can get a link without having to log into Blackboard, and it doesn't look to them. No, it doesn't look like they're logging into Blackboard. It looks like a professionally, you know, a link to an, to an external site. Can I ask what's the difference between an e-portfolio and a research profile? Well, what's the difference between an e-portfolio and a research profile? I, I think, and this discussion has been held, and I think in theory, uh, Peter isn't here, I think, is Peter? Peter Flynn is gone. But we did it, we have had this discussion, and in theory, research students could set up profiles in ours, but we see this as being a more holistic, yeah. whereas there's very certain specific objectives <coughs> in the research profile. This can have a personal blog, a personal reflection, professional elements. You know, I think it's, a, and the ability to tailor who sees certain bits, who you want to share with your supervisor, who you want to share with everyone in the UCC, who you want to share outside. I think it is a different range of functionality. There is overlap, but I think there's there's a different range of functionality to the research profile. Okay. Yeah, one more question. What happens with the e portfolios after a student graduates? We asked this question, what was the answer? You're actually able to download your content yourself yeah, and keep you it out. At a point, um, you know, when you know, we'll say now when I graduate and um, finish here, um, there will be a time period where I can actually take the content off mm -hmm. and I can upload it myself onto my own website afterwards. Um, but yeah, it will eventually at some stage finish when I when I do finish. But I can take it and keep it there. You yeah. can export yeah. it to various other packages that can be used that wouldn't require Blackboard subsequently. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 